All right, this meeting is being recorded for Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B. And good evening and welcome to the June 2020 meeting of the Weathersfield Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, I do not have in front of me a direct copy of the agenda, so if anyone has that and wants to uh, flag me if I get uh, off track, certainly let me know. Julie, I know, has one in front of her. Um, but we have one application this evening, and so our order will go. We'll do the public hearing on the application, which is where we take testimony, ask questions of the applicant, then we move to public meeting, which is our commissioner discussion and motion and voting. Uh, as we mentioned a bit in the beginning, uh, there are five commissioners who will vote tonight. Um, you need four affirmative votes for the variance to be granted. And after we've concluded the public meeting, we'll move to other items on the agenda. And I may get this slightly out of order, but I know we have approval of minutes from the May meeting. We have an opportunity for any comment on ZBA business that's not otherwise on the agenda. And then we are hoping to uh, we're hoping to formalize officers, but we are missing a couple of folks again. So we'll uh, chat about that when we get to it. Um, with that, if uh, I could ask Julie to please read the first the application for the public hearing. Sure. Application number 6233-20, variance from section 7.2, yard exception for fences to allow six foot high solid privacy fence running from the rear of the property for 90 feet along the street line property boundary at James Well Road as against four feet high, residential zone A, location 270 Dale Road, applicant Cody Berghoff. All right, and Charles, did you have a staff report that you wanted to read in on this one? Yes, absolutely, I, I do. Um, so, uh, the, the request is for a variance from uh, section 7.2, yard exception for fences, and it's to allow six feet high solid privacy fence running for 90 feet from the rear of the property along the street line of um, James Well Road, as opposed to uh, that four foot high that's required by the regulations. Uh, so just to give you a background, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, a call was received by the zoning enforcement officer on May 6, 2020. And uh, the caller stated that the fence was being constructed at the corner of Dale and James Well Road and appeared to be against the zoning regulations. So I inspected on May 7, and my inspection revealed that a six foot high vinyl privacy fence had been constructed seemingly on the street line. Uh, the fence also appears to stop short of the 40 foot required front yard setback from uh, Dale Road, which is the front of the property. So the mentions of the property are as follows. Uh, the frontage that's along Dale Road, the property line along Dale Road, that's 38.27 feet. The rear property line is um, it's the same. I'm sorry, that should be 83.27. The rear property line is the same, 83.27 feet. And both James Will Road uh, street line and the eastern property line is 145.77 feet. Uh, I pulled the plot plan from the street file in the office and saw that the front yard setback line is 40 feet, which is usually the case in, in um, most of the time. Uh, and then the side yard is 15 feet. That's the building line we're talking about. So although section 3.7 of the zoning regulations, the dimensional requirements, prescribes a minimum side yard and an aggregate side yard setback for, for all properties, a property on a corner lot basically has two frontages. However, uh, the frontage with the shortest length is deemed to be the front yard and usually depicts a 40 foot setback, while the side yard would have either 15 foot or a 20 foot uh, building line setback. Um, in this case, 270 Dale Road has a 15 foot side yard setback. So although the side yard setback for zone A states a minimum of 10 feet 
and then aggregate of 23 feet. Uh, the flood plan has demarcated a 15 foot setback at James Well Road. So in effect, that's where the six foot high fence should have been, 15 foot in from where it currently sits. Uh, background for the zoning uh, regulations. The zoning regulations say that a freestanding fence or other structures may be erected above ground between the street line and building line provided that one, it shall not exceed four feet in height. And two, the fence when viewed at right angles not obstruct visibility by more than 50%. Three, no component other than those required for support shall be greater than six inches in width or diameter. And four, each component shall be distributed so as to A, be separated by a dimension at least equal to its own width and B, provide uniformity of design and visibility throughout the length and height of the fence, wall or structure. So what it is saying, Mr. Chairman, is that for a picket fence, um, the boards have to be the same width. So if, you, if you're using four foot wide bo um, board for the picket fence, then each space has to be four foot. So that's what it means when it says um, that it has to be equal spacing. So um, I, I then had to write a notice of violation to the property owner. And um, I sent the notice of violation out uh, asking the property owner um, to modify the fence to conform to the four feet height. And this, this time the property owner um, inquired about keeping the fence as is because the fence was up already looking all nice and ready. Um, he didn't want to take it down. He, he inquired if there was some other option. Um, so of course I, I advised him that the only option was to file for a variance. So, um, however, on May 18th, I received an email from Mr. Berghoff saying that uh, the town engineer had come to the property and that he said that he did not see a visibility problem at the intersection. I spoke with the, with the town engineer who confirmed that this was so. So in, in concluding, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, the applicant has now applied for um, a variance, which is before the board, and that's to allow the six foot high solid privacy fence to remain on the street line. And um, in so doing, it will leave a 55.79 feet to the prop. So where, the, where, the, where that six foot high fence stops, from there to the front property line is 55.79 feet. And the, regu the regulations call for a um, uh, 40 feet setback from Dale Road, which is the front of the property. Um, I have no concerns really regarding visibility. And like I said before, the, the um, town engineer has no concerns regarding visibility at the intersection um, from the six foot high fence. And um, if there was an issue with visibility at the intersection, it would have to be that the, the, the four foot high fence for that first 40 feet and along Dale Road would have to be at least four feet high and with the um, picket fence that I mentioned either too. Um, so if this variance was granted, um, I don't see a negative impact on the safety you know, at the intersection or um, aesthetics of the neighborhood in, in my view. And um, I have attached the zoning regulation section 7.2, which I have on the screen and um, I can pull that up if so required. And that's basically um, my report, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Um, why don't we hear from the applicant Mr. Berghoff, if you just want to, if you would, just give your name and address for the record. Yep, Cody Berghoff, uh, 270 Dale Road. Great, and um, now we can start with what, uh, what you'd like to tell us, what you'd like us to know about the application, and we may ask you some questions as we go through as well. Sure, sure. So the uh, installation for the fence started on May the 4th, 
Uh, prior to that, I'd contacted Call Before You Dig. Um, they're supposed to get in touch with all the um, utility companies and as well as the town. So notifications were sent according to them. Um, they had told me that I need to set up the, the line of the fence where it's going to go with uh, white stakes and a string line, which I had done. And that was up for two weeks. I hadn't heard anything from the town. So I had called the building department. And at that point, the town buildings were closed due to COVID. So I, uh, I did end up getting in, in touch with, I believe it was the secretary who said that all the zoning regulations are on the, uh, on the internet. So I printed off the uh, entire booklet of the zoning regulations. And um, I looked at those and it was to my interpretation uh, that I was in compliance. Um, as Charles had stated, uh, for the front yard, there's a 40 foot setback. And I was looking at some of the definitions and um, a little bit deceiving on some of them because it was, again, my interpretation that that only applied to the front yard. Um, so I, I, I did look at um, 7.2, which is yard exception for fences, which Charles did read. Uh, now there's two subsections in that one, or I'm sorry, A is open fence, which Charles had read, which is in regards to the four foot fence and the 50% uh, opaque. Uh, there is also a subsection B, which is for solid fences. Um, and I'm not sure if you guys have a, uh, anyway, if you guys have a copy of the zoning regulations with you, but it states uh, a retaining wall, freestanding wall, fence or other structure not complying with the above provisions may be exempt from the front yard requirement for the zone in which it is located if approved by the zoning enforcement official and the town engineer. So when I saw that, um, I had gotten in contact with someone from the engineer's office so that they could come out and take a look. Um, which they did, and they said they didn't have an issue with where the fence was. There was no sight line issues or safety issues uh, at the intersection at Dale and Jameswell. Uh, once I got this information, I had a, or I asked for a meeting with uh, Mr. Morrison, and I believe it's Mr. Sola. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't able to be in the meeting, so I did have a Zoom meeting with Mr. Morrison and Mr. Gillespie. Hope I'm saying that correctly, and that was on May the 21st. Uh, and in that meeting, we discussed uh, the situation. Uh, Mr. Morrison did say that he received correspondence from um, Mr. Sola stating that there, he didn't have an issue with the fence. There was no sightline issues. Uh, so I had asked Mr. Morrison if, as the fence stood now, would he approve it? And he said, yes. He didn't see any issues with where it, where it was. There's no safety issues. Um, so I guess my question and concern is, um, because there's two sections, I know I did file for a variance on uh, 7.2. There is 7.2B, which is specifically uh, in the zoning regulations for solid fences. And I guess my concern is it does state that if it's approved by the zoning enforcement official and the town engineer, um, then you may be able to be exempt from it. Um, so that's why, I, that's why I wanted to go for the variance and, and see where it got me. Okay. Um, question for Charles. The uh, I want to make sure my interpretation of seven uh, of the subsection B is correct that he referenced. If the structure were four feet high but not opaque and there were no issues, that's where you and or the town would have approval without having to seek a variance, right? It's the height and the it's the six feet of privacy fence that's the issue in terms of where it's being placed. Is that correct? That is correct, Mr. Chairman. I'd also, I'd also like to um, point out that um, just by way of correction, that um, Mr. Derek Sola is the IT uh, professional that works in the office and he has nothing at all to do with um, visibility at the intersection and everything. I, the, okay, I'm, I might have the wrong person then, I'm sorry. Could have been, you could have been referring to um, Derek Gregor was the town engineer. Yeah, I was I was just told the name Derek, so I wasn't sure of the last name. So, and so it's not so that. Yeah, okay. De yeah, Gregor then. I'm sorry. My yeah, apologies. The town engineer. Um, yeah, so, that's right. um, so yes, that section that Mr. Okay. Berghoff uh, mentioned a while ago is um, that's relating to uh, if there was an issue with the um, at the intersection and there wasn't a 
for instance, it mentioned it mentioned like a retaining wall, like you had a solid wall, and you you did not have that um, fifty percent opaque. And um, myself and the engineer take a look at it. We could say, well, based on the fact that um, there's no visibility, that we if we don't see a visibility, we could say, okay, that's fine as far as that goes. But that only that only relates to the to the front of the property and not like the side yard because there's no issue with visibility at the side yard. For that 90 feet, there's pretty much no visibility there. Uh, the only visibility is, is, is affected there is, is, is your backyard. Right, I guess my confusion yeah. is because you had stated that there's two frontages, um, that the back or the side yard would be considered a frontage then. No, I said I said two frontages because when I say two frontages, um, it means that the lot is on two streets, so to speak. But the frontage, the front of the property, is really um, that with the shortest width. So, but but the regulations attempt to um, make the corner lots have um, have that kind of a setback, that kind of a setback and that 50% opaque for visibility at the intersection. So if you were to measure 40 feet from that corner where Jameswell Road meets um, meets Dale Road Dale. and measure back to, to the rear of the property for 40 feet that way, we wouldn't want to see a six foot high fence because that's where the visibility um, issue would come in. Right, absolutely. So, that has to be 44 feet high and 50% opaque. But in the case, as the regulation specifies, in the case of a retaining wall or any other kind of freestanding fence that might be constructed or attempted to be constructed without the 50% opaque, myself and, um, and the engineer could say, well, we see no uh, visibility issue there and uh, we could let that go. But um, suffice it to say, we could not look at the six foot fence on the side street line and say, uh, well, there's no visibility, so let it go. Uh, the the okay. proper channel to do that, and the Board of Appeals is um, has the responsibility of hearing uh, parents' applications for parents and making their decision based on what how they see fit. Okay, so we're we're in the right place. Um, that's good. Why don't we um, open it up? And I'm just going to kind of go in the order of how I can see commissioners on the screen and uh, do a call to see if anybody has any questions. Rita, you're first up on mine. Do you have any questions? Um, Dave, I have a question first. Um, are we, do we have questions now of, of Mr. Burgoff or do you have yes. other other people statements first? No. Questions first? Uh, no, we, we should do questions first. Yeah. Um, okay. So yes. I have a, I do have a question. Excuse then. me. I, I yeah? know that that you've heard from the applicant, um, you're not gonna ask for um, anyone that wants to speak for or- Oh, uh, do I, we can go ahead or I was just gonna- first? It's up to you, Mr. Chairman. I was gonna go to discussion first, but okay, um, that's we, fine. Can, that's we can fine. go the other way if you like. That's fine. No, 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 that's fine. Okay. Th that's what I thought, I wasn't sure. Um, um, there is a, a guide application guidance for installing fences that the town has and I think it it says pretty clearly that between the street line and the building line, it can't be more than four feet. I mean, it doesn't yes, say I, doesn't say, doesn't say front, front or side. It's between it's the street line. So one of my concerns was because your property abuts a, a home, which their front door faces Jameswell. Your back fence is actually really coming into their front front yard wouldn't you say yeah so um the the property owner who uh that i have bought there um he actually paid for half of that part because he wanted the fence there as well so we split the cost of that so he wants the fence out to the street line correct yes i don't think the town necessarily wants that kind of structure though according to the zoning regulation. Okay. Okay. And so right. did you check the app? Did you check that guide to fences? I did and that's that's where I I guess I misunderstood. Before you I put it up. 
before you installed the fence? I know I, I should have had a better understanding before that. Um, I guess I, I must have read a little too deeply into the, um, the definitions and the, the regulations yeah. because it kind of painted a different picture in my head. I thought it was only for front yards. Um, I, I wouldn't have thought for my backyard that would have been. Um, you know. Yeah, I think it's because the backyard really is a someone else's front yard. Okay, for now. Okay, uh, Dan, you're next up on my screen. Any questions? You're on mute, Dan. I'm sorry. Sorry. Right. How far is it from the street? Is it one foot? Seven feet. So from Jameson Road onto your property, it's seven foot, seven Correct. feet in. Yep. Okay. Thank you. That's all I had. All right, Kevin, you're next up. Any questions? Uh, not, not for the applicant. I got, I got questions for Charles. Okay. Uh, Paul, are you? Uh, looks like you were having a couple of connection issues. Are you back with us? Paul, can you hear us? All right, we'll move on. So that's uh, the four of us. Um, all right, I guess Kevin, why don't you go ahead with your? Well, actually, let's um, let's come back. If you got a question, just for Charles, let's come back. So let's offer opportunity. If do we have anybody? who wishes to speak in favor of this variance? Mr. Mr. Chairman, um, I received two uh, emails, like uh, one was received like two minutes before six and one uh, nine minutes before six this afternoon. And I start from I start by reading the first one, which I haven't even opened yet, and um, that's from Javier B. And it says, and I quote, as a resident of Wethersfield and a neighbor of Mr. Borghoff at 270 Dale Road, I admire the newly constructed fence. I believe the fence is aesthetically pleasing while also providing privacy to Mr. Berger, as well as his neighbors. I support the application for a variance for Mr. Berger, and I believe his fence is tasteful and useful and is, wel is a welcomed uh, addition to the neighborhood. I do not see any issues to his fence, and I believe that this fence does not impede the view of motorists on Dale Road or on Jamesville Road in any way. I respectfully believe the Wethersfield Zoning Board should not have any issue with granting this variance to Mr. Berghoff, as I believe it only adds to the aesthetics and the property value of his home, as well as the homes surrounding. Uh, this came from Javier Bello of 231 Clearfield Road. Okay, uh, Charles, it looks like we may have um, Mr. Bello on the line. Do we want to take a moment to uh, ask if he wants to add to that comment or do you want to finish reading in what you have? Um, you can take him, Mr. Chairman. All right, did I see correctly that we have Mr. Bello on? And if you're on, you may still be on mute. Okay, I thought we had somebody joining. Um, all right, Charles, why don't you go on to the next one? Okay. And then I do see we have a couple of hands raised. We'll get to you. Next and, letter uh, you to is from Joseph Lucas. And Joseph Lucas um, writes as follows, and I quote, my name is Joseph Lucas. I live at 138 Jameswell Road in Wethersfield. My phone number is 860-918-5681. I write today regarding application number 6233-20 applicant Cody Berger. For clarification purposes, Mr. Berger's back property line abuts the side of my property on Jameswell. When I'm not fighting crime by night, just ask my other neighbors. 
I am an employee at a local architectural firm where my duties, among other things, include plan review for frontage and advising clients and municipalities on site lines for large capital improvement projects throughout our great state. While not retained on behalf of Mr. Berger, my professional career has taught me a little about some of the concerns that I believe this variance has, was implemented to help and prevent. To be clear, I fully support this application and strongly suggest the committee does so as well. Regarding a concern of, fate, of safety or sight lines, I travel so on Jameswell at least five days a week. Mr. Berghoff's fence is far enough past his dwelling that his house is more of an obstruction blocking any oncoming traffic long before his fence could or ever would. When returning to my home, because his fence is set back beyond the corner of his dwelling, his vehicle is more of an obstruction than any size fence could or would ever be. Someone traveling at a normal rate of speed when approaching Jameswell from the west or east on Dale would safely be able to navigate the turn with ample time to respond as necessary to anything traveling south and Jameswell should the need arise. On a personal note, I have found that Mr. Berghoff is a simple man and a local volunteer first responder in our town. He just wants a little bit of privacy when he returns home and some space for his new pup to run free. As his neighbor, I fully support his application and hope the committee will support it as well. Thank you very much. Joseph Lucas, 138 Jamesville Road, 860-918-5681. All right, and Mr. Lucas has a hand raised in the uh, meeting room. Would you like to add any comments, sir? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, the uh, only thing I'd like to add um, to Mrs. Owen's comment about uh, the fence being all the way up to the uh, front of the street on Jameswell, um, for those of you that might not know, where we live is sandwiched between Walcott Hill Road and Ridge Road towards the, uh, the crest at Ridge Road. Um, when I stand in my backyard, uh, I can see into the backyards and windows of eight of the houses around me. Um, this fence, as it's currently installed, blends in nicely. So at the front of my house, um, the bushes that I have running along the street, it provides um, some resemblance of privacy. Uh, so as a neighbor, um, I support, and as I think uh, Cody said before, we even paid for half of the fence um, just so that we could have some bit of privacy. When you live um, on this part or in this part of Weathersfield, it's very easy for neighbors to, to be able to see into other people's properties. And uh, the fence at least gives myself and my family um, some resemblance of privacy. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, Charles, did you have anything else to read in? in terms of comments you've received? Uh, no, those are the only two uh, things that I've received and they're both speaking um, for uh, Mr. Berger. Okay, um, and I see, um, forgive me if I mispronounce the last name, Ms. Barasa, uh, did you wish to speak? Hi, sorry, yep, Robin, Bar Robin Barasa, 248 Dale Road. Go ahead, please. <clears throat> I um, live approximately three houses down from uh, Mr. Berghoff's house, and I just am uh, speaking on uh, behalf of my family and saying that we are fine with the fence. We support it. Um, visually, it's, it looks very nice. Um, uh, when someone new or young moves into the neighborhood, you're pretty excited, and Mr. Berghoff, um, has appeared to be working on his house every day, uh, making it look nice. He seems to be very vested in our neighborhood. Um, I know he does have a new uh, little puppy, 
and probably wants to allow it to run around a little bit in addition to have some privacy. And um, we're just excited um, uh, when people come in and you know work hard and spend a lot of time and maybe some money to make their properties a little better and nicer. And um, uh, just want to say we support it. We don't think it looks bad. Um, it looks well made, well put in, and um, we're okay with it. So that's all I wanted to say. All right, thank you very much. Um, I see we do have a couple of other callers uh, joining the meeting. So I just wanna uh, flag one more time. If anybody wants to unmute, if anybody else wishes to speak on this application who hasn't had a chance to speak yet. All right, going once. Um, okay, I wanna turn it back just to make sure we have ample opportunity. Um, back to any of the commissioners. And I know, Paul, you were out for a little bit. Are you back and able to hear us? I am back here now. Okay. Uh, did you have any questions, Paul? I'm sorry. I think I'm good on questions right now. Okay. All right. Uh, any other commissioners, if you want to unmute, if you had any other questions? Okay. Uh, Mr. Berghoff, anything you want to add before we close out the, the hearing? Uh, nope. No, I think I stated everything I needed to. Thank you. Okay. All right. With that, uh, then can we have a motion from one of the commissioners to close the public hearing? Make a motion to close the public hearing. I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, motion passes. We'll move into our public meeting. Julie, if I could uh, ask you one more time to read the application. Application number 6233-20, variance from section 2.2, yard exception for fences to allow six foot high solid privacy fence running from the year, rear of the property for 90 feet along the street line property boundary at James Well Road as against four feet high, residential zone A, 270 Dale Road, applicant Cody Berghoff. All right, thank you. And uh, so as we start discussion, there are just a handful of points that um, I think are somewhat pertinent. So one is to remember that uh, as we discuss and as we vote, the fact that the structure is at least partially constructed is not really something we can take into account. Um, yeah, we have to approve the, the variance on its merits. Um, the other uh, piece I would add is uh, we, you know, we've had a, an application very similar to this in our recent history. Um, to that same point, each application we receive, we hear on its own merits and uh, we're not And uh, then I'll just, a quick piece of my perspective. I, I just, I find this um, to be challenging for corner lots and understand the, the needs and concerns around the visibility and safety, particularly at, at the intersection. But if those things are not at, um, or of concern, particularly to the, the representatives of the town who have, evaluated that I just am challenged by the fact that if there were another house on the other side you know that that fence could go up and and so I'll just clarify again that you know the reason we're hearing this as an application is because one of two things could have happened and not required us to be here one is the fence could have been on the building line um, I'm sorry on the on the property line and have met the four feet 50% opaque requirements that Charles was reading, or the six foot privacy fence would be okay, but set back all the way uh, 15 feet in. So since we're outside of those two possibilities, we're hearing the application. Um, and with that, I'll quiet myself for a moment and let uh, any of the other commissioners weigh in with discussion. I should uh, make a motion, I think first, right? 
Yeah, actually, and that was my uh, error a couple of meetings ago. We actually don't have to do that. We can have our discussion okay. in, in absence of a, of a motion. So yeah, thank you for flagging that though. Well, I, I'm, I can go, I guess. Um, so I, Charles, I'm, I guess I'm still a little confused about the section B um, of that, of that, uh, uh, about the six foot high uh, section, because I brought this up on a previous application. Um, so, I, I mean, again, I mean, both both sides are, are really being considered as as fronts but you're saying if he's it needs to be 40 feet back from the smallest dimensional side correct yes yes and um and commissioner tedesco um what what we do in in the zoning office we look at the street files and the street files has demarcated the for every street file, they have demarcated the property line, the building lines, right? The building line is usually 40 feet from the front of the property. And for the side, it ranges from, it's either, not ranges from, it's either 15 feet or 20 feet. Um, so, so in this case, uh, Mr. Berghoff's property, 270 Dale Road, uh, requires a 15 feet building line set up from the side yard. And remember now, it's still regarded as the side yard. Okay. Um, it, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Kevin, just to, to add to that. So the, the, I'll say the difference we have with a corner lot versus an internal lot. So if this were his backyard in an internal lot, he could put a six foot high privacy fence right on the property line, correct, Charles? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yes. And we heard that um, this one, while not set back to the building line, is going to be seven feet in from the street, I believe is what we heard. That's correct, seven feet. All right, any other um, comments, questions from commissioners? Rita, go ahead. I, I guess my concern is still the fact that, yes, it's a corner lot, but the house next to it is not a corner lot. And maybe in this case, the neighbor doesn't care and actually wants it and even asked, you know, offered to pay for half of it. But there are many corner lots in this town where I don't think that's going to be the case. And I know we look at each application separately, but I also think the zoning laws are there and there has to be some consistency in applying them. So I, I am torn here because there is enough, for instance, there's another house on James Well, the other end of the street same situation. I don't know what they asked for a variance. I had no, I wasn't here then, but they have solid fencing, you know, except on the street side and then it's set back and it's four feet. Um, that's, that's the zoning regulation. Yep. No, I, I understand that perspective. I, I just, um, if, I just for me personally, um, in a case where there's been no risk in terms of visibility uh, or concern for traffic, um, we're in in applying the letter of the regulation to a corner lot. In this case, where there's not an overriding safety concern, we're essentially limiting. Um, in my interpretation, the use of the backyard of the property because we're we're more than meeting the requirement from Dale Road in this case, uh, which is you know the front requirement. You said Charles, fifty-five feet. Yes. I believe was where we are. Okay, and that and Charles from the application, that's where the fence will end, right? Is at that 
even with the house there as you face it from Dale Road? I'm sorry, I didn't quite, uh, my, my speaker is a little low. Mr. That's okay, I just was clarifying um, your understanding because I don't have the, wasn't able to print the plot plan. So as we look at the house from Dale Road, the six foot high fence will end 55 feet from the road. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. It's, it's actually in, it's actually behind the line of the house, so to speak. Okay. And, and just to clarify, we're going to be seven feet off of James Well. Um, and obviously it's a long fence, so we get into some area considerations. But um, if that were set back eight more feet, we would not need to have this discussion. Is that correct, Charles? Um, Mr. Chairman, I don't think it's eight feet. Well, if, okay, so we need to be 15 feet total from, 15 feet. from James Wealth to not have this discussion, okay. All right, um, Paul, I wanted to give you a chance if you wanted to weigh in. I know you, like I said, got cut out a little bit. I wanna make sure you've got all the information that you feel you need. Actually, um, from what I've looked at here on the um, on the diagram, uh, I'm kind of you know of the same mindset like Rita. I'm a bit torn in between because of the, you know, what the zoning rules are, and um, I understand that currently right now, uh, based on the application that was submitted, um, there isn't a safety concern, uh, but. You know, um, I'm just, you know, again, torn in possibly having the next application that shows up for, that's on a corner lot, um, someone wanting this. And, you know, it, I know even though we look at each application separately, this is, you know, it, it's, I'm, I'm torn on what my decision should be, put it that way, based on how the, um, the regulations are written. Okay. Um, just, just look, Charles. Is there is there any recollection? Um, you know, I see the, the, you know, just looking at the zoning regulations as a whole document. You know, comprehensive revision, revisions said they were done in two thousand and four. In in all of these amended, um, you know, uh, you know, like the last one was done in twenty eighteen. You know, is there? Can you remember anything that was done in fencing? in any of these I mean because this this to me is similar to you know it's a little bit more complex than the um, you know than the AC units but I think there's I think there's grounds here for more comprehensive and more uh, uh, more modern zoning code regulations I mean, here I mean um, the, the zoning regulations is clear as to what it, 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 uh, it specifies, um, you know, I, I really don't see a confusion with the zoning regulations. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's, it's not the confusion, it's just the, you know, trying to speak to, you know, when was the last time, you know, fencing regulations have been updated and, and actually looked at on a, on a town level? That's one thing. I mean, it could be revisited. It could be discussed to see if there could be, just like we do um, different parts of the regulation from time to time. I, it's not something that is done on a regular basis. Um, the, since I've been with the town, the sign regulations have been revised. Um, one or two areas have been um, cut and carved, but um, that's something that we could look to in, in the future to see if we need to, whether there's a need to um to to rewrite the, the regulations for specifically for the fence and what would be what would be required to change or to add to it um maybe we need to clarify more on the part of the the, the, the um the town engineer and the zoning officer being being um able to to, to approve it, I mean, we would not be able to just approve it like that um, word of mouth. 
I mean, in a situation like this, I would rather know that it comes before the Board of Appeals rather than we try to um, make these decisions outside to say, okay, this is approved or this is not approved. This, you know. Um. Okay. Um, Reed, I think you wanted to weigh back in. Um, yeah, a couple of things. I think I really the town could do a better job at communicating certain things. I mean, you know, you, you can search online and find that guide to fences, but it would be nice if it was a little bit more obvious for people, for homeowners, but it, it is there. And I am concerned that corner lots, there are a lot of corner lots in town. And I think we, it's, it's an issue of fairness sometimes too, that if you go by the regulations and then you see your neighbor they didn't go by the regulations, put up a fence, and, and now they can get a variance, and you put up your four-foot fence. Um, it, it's, I think it's a difficult situation, but the, yep. the regulations are pretty clear that it has to be a hardship for us to, to give a variance, and looking at the other ones we have have come before us, I'm not sure this is a hardship Let's compared to the up. hardship that we agonized over the last time we had a fence. Let me say that um, um, in recent times in, 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 in my uh, office, I've gotten uh, several inquiries. I could spend all day replying to inquiries, mm -hmm. right? Now fences is one of the main ones. We, we, I received several inquiries for fences um, during any, any particular day. And um, I'm able to guide the, the homeowners and um, they always, I can say for the most part, as a matter of fact, I think I can safely say they always understood, you know, the regulations as I um, related to them. So. Yeah, I don't think it's your communication. I'm saying when you go on to the, the town web site right that's what i'm looking saying. for information you know, yes it could be clearer. And, and, and some of them would have read the, the the regulations before and then they called me and said charles I, I was i went to the website there were the regulations but could you please clarify for me what this means or what that means you know so um yes yeah and i would just add um not to the communication piece but just in in terms of the this case where we have a, a structure that's already up uh, in the same way that we we can't take that into account in terms of just saying, well, all right, it's up, let's approve it. We also don't want to penalize. Um, it, we just want to well, be able to hear hear the, the this application on its merits. And, and and as I look at it, you know, we heard um, from the staff report and also from the engineer that indicated there were no challenges from a traffic or safety perspective. We heard uh, three neighbors in the area, including one who um, is in such favor of it that agreed to um, fund half of the, uh, the structure. So, um, and it's just, so it comes down, it'll come down to interpretation. Um, for me, um, in this kind of situation where there is no overriding safety concern or um, community um, op opposition, it then does come down to feeling, you know, maybe it shouldn't, uh, and I'm open to that, but it does uh, certainly feel like a bit of a, a hardship to have to give up um, that much of a side yard um, for, for the purpose of privacy, yeah. Um, Dan, you've been off mute. Did you want to weigh in? Mm. I, I'll just weigh in. I just did all your comments, Dave. I, you know, it's, we heard from three people, three of the neighbors saying that they're in favor and one of them actually paid for half of it. Um, so I have nothing more to add than that. Okay. And just a quick comment, Mr. Lucas, I see you've got your hand raised. Unfortunately, we can't take any additional testimony during our public meeting. So just wanted to let you know, I see the hand, but uh, we'll, we'll have an opportunity after we take our vote. If you want to weigh in on any, uh, additional matters. Um, all right, Kevin, did you want to add anything? No. Okay. Um, 
Well, if there's no further discussion, I'll ask if we have uh, a motion. I move to uh, approve the application as submitted. And do we have a second? I'll second. All right, so we have a motion to approve the application as submitted. And we have five commissioners, all of whom will vote. So all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? I'm opposed. I'm gonna oppose this one. Okay, so we had three affirmative and two negative votes. So that means that the variance is not passed. Um, so Mr. Berghoff, uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, if you wanna, as I said, stick around for the rest of the meeting, you're welcome to. Uh, otherwise, Charles, will you be following up with the applicant or? Um, yes, I okay. definitely will be following up with the applicant because um, in, in this case, what it means is that um, Mr. Berghoff will have to cut that fence down to four feet or um, take it out and, um, and replace it with a six foot fence 15 feet in from the street line. Okay. Um, Julie, can I ask you for uh, just help with what is uh, specifically next on our agenda? The next Machine. thing on the agenda, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, is, what do you have, Charles? Is the approval of um, minutes of May 27, 2020. And then there's other business of which I have something to um, bring to your attention regarding the last meeting and um, uh, stipulations that were made. Um, number 2A, public comments and general matters of the zoning board. Number three, formalization of officer for adjournment. So we have pretty much three other, before the adjournment, we have three other um, items on the agenda. This year. Okay. Um, so on the minutes, um, I found one just very minor thing on page three. Um, I'd be right. I'd be right. Back. Okay. While we wait for Charles to come back, did anybody else find any things that need to be adjusted in the minutes? No. Okay, I think we have all five, and it's just a very minor spelling thing on page three. Not sure how far Charles had to go. Okay. All right, Charles, just uh, the very minor thing I found was on page three, just past the halfway point. There's a paragraph that starts with acting chair Gustafson asked about stipulation number three. As you move to the second sentence, uh, Mr. Buck explained the former, I believe it should be ox shed, right? It just says ox she right now. So that was the only thing I found. And uh, I don't think we had any other corrections. So I, I will move that we approve the May minutes as uh, submitted with that one change. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, minutes are approved. Uh, Charles, what does that take us to? Sorry, I don't have the copy of the agenda in front of me. What's our next one? Okay, um, so the next item on the agenda is... Uh, 
That was the approval of the minutes. And the next item is other business. And then after that, there will be public comments and general matters of the zoning board. So okay. um, under other business, um, I just would like to bring to the board's attention um, some correspondence that I have received from uh, the applicant of the last meeting uh, that um, 411 to 431 uh, Hartford Avenue, you will recall um, that there were five stipulations and um, the first one was um, that the, the petition was approved and um, the first stipulation was that uh, the variance was granted contingent on the lot sub subdivision being approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, my last inquiry last week, um, I found out that the, the application has not yet been made to the commission. Um, second stipulation was that 431 Hartford Avenue is to be used as an arts academy only. And number three, there shall be no off-site parking. Four, any re renovations or reuse of the West Barn must conform to the requirements of the Historic District Commission and the parking guidelines as set by the Planning and Zoning Commission. And the fifth Stipulation says that any additional transfer of the property from the Arts Academy will nullify the variance and the property will remain as residential. And, and what this means here um, is that um, any other use apart from an Arts Academy, it did not say, it specified the name of the Arts Academy because right now we know that the name is the Wethersfield Arts Academy. And it didn't say if it changed to the art for the Arts Academy or anything. It said once it changes from the Arts Academy, that will nullify the variance and it will remain as residential. And this was um, this this stipulation was brought down from the original variance, which was granted in 2005, which said that it had to remain in a, in 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 a, as an Arts Academy. And you will very well recall that. Um, the only reason that it came up before you is that, I mean, the, the zone has changed. It's still in the residential zone. The zone has not changed. Um, the only reason why it came back is because of the proposed lot split, which will make the Arts Academy a principal structure as against um, an accessory um, structure. So uh, Mr. Buck sent me we have had conversations a couple of times and um, on Friday, June 19th, he sent me an email which read as follows, and I quote, we have modified stipulation five, hopefully to meet all requirements. Please see attachment. Note that we have said an arts academy rather than the arts academy. If Wethersfield Academy for the Arts fails or quits, we would still like to use the property for an arts academy, even if we manage it ourselves. So um, I think, and I'd just like to share that with you, um, if I may. Um, So Charles, they're proposing a modification to that fifth point. Is that what you're saying? Yes, they're proposing a modification to that um, to, to that um, fifth uh, stipulation. Uh, but what what they're saying is that uh, uh, if it fails or quits, they would like to still use the property as an arts academy. But nothing is preventing them from doing that. Yeah, it, it, so that one, um, 
I mean, that was one of, I think, the biggest pieces of feedback we had from the neighbors in this case was that concern of what happens, you know, if the property, you know, if right now this split is approved and the owner of the property becomes the Weathersfield Arts Academy, what happens if they then turn around and sell the property to someone else? Uh, you know, we heard some testimony, I think, and people saying, you know, we don't want a grocery store to go in there, or, you know, car lot or whatever that would be. So that was, uh, at least as I remember it, and anybody else feel free to weigh in. I think that was one of the things, big things we were trying to protect against with that fifth stipulation, which was just to say, if that point comes where the Art Academy is transferring the property, selling the property, doing something else, that it, we wanted it to be clear that the zoning is residential. Um, and, and so I don't think it, it, for what they're describing, right, the, the Arts Academy would have to go under, would have to sell the property back to um, Mr. Buck, in, in which case he would be free, and, unless I'm misinterpreting, but he would be free to come back before the board to seek a variance to continue with another um, school or nonprofit or whatever he wanted to do there. But um, that was, I mean, we heard quite a bit of testimony. That meeting ran fairly long. So I think we wanted to be um, provide some safeguard to folks in the neighborhood who were concerned about that next step. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of concern about this step, but it was really that next one uh, after the fact. So I don't know what, uh, do you, are you look, are you sharing something, Charles? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I'm trying okay. to look the revised stipulation here. Um, I'm trying to open it. It's taking a little while. And, and I'm going to confess, this is um, one that, this is something I have not come across. So if, would we have to take this up at another meeting and revote on this revised stipulation if we're so inclined? We, we could do that, but um, for your information, Mr. Chairman, I, I have on the screen stipulation number five, and this is the attachment that Mr. Buck referred to. And this is what he would, apparently this is what he would like to see as the as stipulation number five. So I'm, I'm curious for anyone else's opinion. As I see, as I read this, I don't see that it addresses what I think we were trying to get to in that stipulation number five. My, what, was the, what was the wording of our stipulation number five again? This is this is the proposed. Um, right, this is the proposed one, but from number five, because what number five says, and um, if I could. Um, from the minutes, it says any additional transfer of the property away from the Art Academy nullifies the variance and the zoning remains residential. I don't know if we changed that for what got presented to them, but that's what's in the minutes. Right, and that's, that's, that's all that the board is interested in. I think, I think Mr. Buck is trying to get the board involved with um, distribution of, of assets and some kind of um, funding I think he wants the board to 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 um to put in in its um stipulation how because if you see here what he says all assets or money from the sale shall be distributed for one or more exempt purposes as defined. I don't know if the board is interested in putting that kind of a word in, in into the stipulation. I mean that's that's their prerogative in terms of their management and um, what the charter and the, the, you know, and the revenue code requires. All we are saying is that it remains as, um, all the board is saying is that it remains as, um, 
as an arts academy, even if it's changed from the Wethersfield Arts Academy. We, the board, I don't think, and I don't know if the board is even uh, concerned about um, the assets or the money from the state, the distribution of the assets. I, I, I don't know why he's trying to impose that on the board. Yeah. To make I mean, bottom, bottom line is if it, if it, if it shifts from being an arts academy, I, I don't think we care what it's called or who's running it. Right. Our, it, all the funds it, is distributed or dispersed or yeah. whatever. It's an art academy or it's not. And if it's not, then, uh, I mean, it's not our purview. I don't, I mean, I correct me if I'm wrong. It's not our purview. What happens to the property afterwards or who sells it, who gets it. Uh, whoever gets it needs to understand that it's going to be a residential zone if it's sold and they're not running an art academy. I, I, I definitely don't think we should, we should reject this. Yeah, I would think it's up to their bylaws to determine how assets are transferred. It shouldn't be a stipulation. Yeah, that, that's my feeling as well. I, I yeah. unless it's very possible that there's you know a piece here that I'm not connecting the dots on, but this seems like it's. Uh, beyond what our effort was. And also this, um, this seems to actually open up a little bit on what we, because it references if it's transferred to another organization. Um, so it does not maintain that specificity around the art academy that we had in our original one. So, um, and then if it's sold for residential use, then the variance is somewhat moot at that point anyway. Could um, we, even we can't even change it at this point, could we, without a whole other hearing? I mean, yeah, that was my question, I how, think, how we would even go about doing that. Yeah. But, but, but I, again, again, Mr. Chairman, he has included um, the board stipulation, which says, and I quote, any use of the property other than as an arts academy okay. or residence shall nullify the variance and require approval from the zoning board of appeals. But he wants to further, he wants the board to further take it upon itself. Okay. Add no. this section, the second um, paragraph here that says, if it is transferred to another organization <coughs> or sold for residential use, the assets and money and sales shall be distributed for one or more exempt purposes. Yeah, that's something I think outside of the board's um, purview, in, in my opinion. Yeah, it takes the point that I was not even, I was so focused on the second sentence, Charles, I was missing that uh, he had us covered in the first sentence. So I appreciate that. Um, but it, yeah, and if it's sold for residential use, um, uh, yeah, I mean, this just feels like we would want uh, input from the town attorney to me if we were going to even entertain this. Right. I don't know. I mean, do we even, I mean, I guess, uh, Charles, what's, I mean, I think Dave was asking, what's, what's the course of action here? I mean, can we, can we just say no? And I mean, I think our stipulation as it was covered it and was pretty clear uh, to, to the, to the extent I think we were intending it to be, you know, I guess what's, what's our response to this? How do we go about it? You can make your response whichever way. I mean, like the chairman says, um, you could um, see council, you know, seek uh, legal opinion from council as to, oh, you know, if this is something that you could do or you would want to do, you know. Well, I'd be, I mean, I guess that would be the thing that would seal it for me, Charles, if we could just say, because it feels like they were adding to the stipulation in a way that is uh, dictating a real estate transaction. Right. Uh, and that feels definitely beyond zoning appeals to me. But um, if we could, uh, I mean, I'd be open if you wanted to take this to the town attorney and get us an opinion as to whether we're correct on that. This, this doesn't feel to me like anything that's in our purview to add. Yes, I, I think you'd, you'd be better off getting a legal opinion on this, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so can you seek that on our behalf? We'll do. Thank you. All right. Um, anything else that you had, Charles? Uh, we have an 
opening for public comments and general matters of the Zoning Board of Appeals. All right, I'm looking at the participant list. I don't see anybody but us remaining, but I'll do a quick call in case I'm not seeing anybody. Is there anyone who wishes to speak on any matters? All right, uh, let it be noted. There were no, no pieces of input, um, which brings us to the selection of officers, correct? Yes. Um, which, I, again, I, I am challenged by having two of our permanent members not be present for that discussion. Um, Michael and Elizabeth are still maintaining their membership, right? Neither one of them is uh, resigning their positions. Charles, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, I just said, Mike, well, I guess, yeah, Elizabeth was on the last meeting. Michael's missed a couple. Um, oh, Paul, Paul got knocked out. Um, I mean, I, I'm torn on this one. I, I know there's something we want to get done, but also it just feels um, to be something that we should have all the permanent members involved in. Um, so I, I guess I'm going to move again that we uh, table the officer discussion to next month's meeting. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? A question. Do uh, we meet in July? Do we? Are we meeting in July or is it August that we skip? Uh, we don't know yet. Um, July meeting, I think it's the 27th, and um, the cutoff date for applications is the 6th of July. So on the 7th of July, I will be able to answer that question. Okay, we don't skip July because of summer? Oh, um, not no. typically. No, okay. I, yeah, I don't think we have ever done that. Um, okay. It's, it, it, it has happened organically before when we have no yeah. applications. Okay, but, uh, yeah. got it. All right, so I don't think we finished the, uh, let's take our vote on that motion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right, the motion passes. Uh, Charles, is that it for the agenda? That's it, Mr. Chairman. I've, all right. I have um, one real quick question. Charles, sure. if we were gonna, uh, let's say, if we were gonna try to get uh, some of these zoning uh, some of the zoning ordinances looked at or talked about is that something we can bring up how, how do we, what's the channel to to get something like that looked at um you know I the mean, fences the, we, the air condenser units that type of stuff you could make suggestions um and then we could bring it to the planning and zoning commission and um, see but in the past efforts have been made to um, to change the the, um, the requirements for the air conditioning units, um, and uh, just to, just to re reiterate what was the situation with the air conditioning units, uh, these these units are seen as accessory structures. So um, accessory structures are only allowed in the rear yard. So if these if these condensers are placed in the rear yard, then we have no issue. The issue comes in when they are placed in the in the side yard. So because um, they are accessory structures and they're not allowed in the side yard, what the regulations try, what they try to do, and uh, this is not something that's written, and that, that's what I inherited. Um, what they do is say, okay, if it's gonna be in the side yard, then it must be, it must become a part of the principal structure. Hence, you must provide the required side yard setback, whether it's be five feet, 10 feet, or 15 or 12 feet. Um, however, it's kind of a tricky situation because there's a section in the regulations that says that an accessory structure can be in the front yard as long as it's set about 70 feet from the front property line. Hmm. Okay. So, you know, there are different and I think that means it could be in the side yard as well as long as it, I, I'm not sure about the side yard, but I know it could be in the front yard if it's set up a certain distance. 
So we could discuss it and see if there's any um, way that we could change that. You know. Okay. All yeah. Right. And I, Go ahead, Rita. Yeah, and I'm I'm with Kevin. I think some of these things have to be addressed, and it makes it easier for the taxpayer and for for us. The ACs are one. The fences are another. I mean, that section B definitely says solid fence, and section A is open fence, and everybody loves these white vinyl fences. So they're solid fences. I think we have to figure it out. All right. Yep. Yeah. Did, yeah. I just ha have a question. Did everybody drive by that house on Jamesville and see it? Yeah. Mm. You saw it? Okay. Yeah. I, I, again, yeah, just. I no, I'm just concerned about that front yard, that that's going to become acceptable. The front yard across from them? The front yard, James, the house on Jamesville, because that. I wouldn't want my neighbor to have a, a side yard fence that came out that far into my front yard. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and on a corner lot, that can happen in a lot of places. I see. Your and I, I just, it's, that last fence one we had was oh, however, before this. I mean, that was not a safety issue either, so, yeah. The, however, that neighbor across the street seemed to to um, not have a problem with it. Oh was, no, I I agree. Was he, I, was he the one that put half of the money up? Yeah. No, that was next door, not mm. across the street. Next door. Oh. Mm. Oh okay. I think. No, I, the guy who put no? the guy who put the money up is the one. He's the neighbor that the fence is riding up into the like his front yard. That's, That's what, I, what thought. I thought. Yeah. yeah. So he's on James while looking at the fence, right? His yeah, I mean he's his, looking his side yard abuts the applicant's backyard. Okay. Yeah, if you're looking at James looking at James Row looking at his house, uh the applicant's I, yard. I really right. don't see why he would be interested in um putting up a half of the money, but that's just my opinion. Yeah, that, that was a new one. I have not heard that before. Yeah. Um, he doesn't like people looking into his yard. Yeah. All right. Well, once again, we've gone uh, a little longer than uh, what we typically do. I, I don't know if I can say that our meetings are typically 30 minutes or less anymore. So I appreciate everybody hanging in and uh, appreciate stay all the Stay well, discussion. everybody. As always, stay well, and we'll see you next month. The meeting is adjourned. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank Take care. Thank you you may not end the meeting, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. Meeting is adjourned. Okay, good night, everyone. Good, good night. night. Good night. night.